What you're seeing is my reinterpretation of what is perhaps the earliest prototypical form of the classic Star Destroyer design. This is a study model created by Colin Cantwell, one of the original designers on Star Wars. Colin Cantwell designed prototypes for almost every ship in the original film. The X-Wing, the Y-Wing, the TIE Fighter, the Death Star, the T-16 Skyhopper, the Millennium Falcon, though this concept would eventually become the Blockade Runner, but that's another story, and of course, the Star Destroyer. In early drafts of the script, the Star Destroyer was actually a fighter craft launched from larger carriers. Concept art by Colin Cantwell reflects this reality. Now, eventual design elements of the final Star Destroyer can still be seen in the Imperial Cruiser here. That is, the classic Imperial design aesthetic was already established pretty early on, but the iconic triangle shape is attributed to the fighters. Now, this ship design would actually be pulled off the shelf for the first time in some 40 years to take on the role of the Imperial Arrestor Cruiser, seen briefly and pretty indistinctly in the solo film, though more prominently in a deleted scene. Eventually, the triangular shape as well as the Star Destroyer label would be applied to the larger cruiser as reflected in the prototype model, and the fighter craft would become the TIE Fighter. These designs would later be reinterpreted by Joe Johnston, who is largely responsible for the on-screen versions of the ships that we're familiar with today. But it was Colin Cantwell who put down the groundwork for virtually every ship in the film, and in the case of the T-16 Skyhopper, he actually provided the final design. The model that Luke is seen briefly playing with was made by Colin on Cantwell. Cantwell's Star Destroyer always had a certain appeal to me. It has a proud, unabashed maritime navy quality to it, and although its design sensibilities aren't exactly in line with the final on-screen visual language of Star Wars, it's still a pretty solid design, and I felt that it could easily be updated to match the Imperial fleet as we know it. First, a color change goes a long way. For some, even just that would be enough, but I really wanted to take it the whole way. Now, I wanted to keep the blatant redesigns to a minimum. For instance, these disc-shaped turrets absolutely had to stay. But certain elements I would preserve the basic concept of the shape, but reimagine their functions. These bulbs would become turrets, and although this shape is basically the same part on the model, I thought this was a perfect place to put the iconic Star Destroyer sensor globes. The huge antenna array would stay, but Star Wars doesn't really seem to like this sort of element. Antennas in Star Wars are typically pretty simple or blocky shapes. For instance, look at the antenna array on an Imperial One-Class Star Destroyer. So I didn't want to give up this look completely, but I would push this element more toward the standard Imperial look. It's more blocky and fleshed out. And honestly, the rest kind of just fell into place. The only thing I really blatantly changed was the addition of an angled spine behind the superstructure, which not only visually ties it more to the Star Destroyer aesthetic, but it helps flesh out what is admittedly a somewhat sparse area on the original model. Something else I did was I doubled the length, or what I thought the length was. Looking at the model, it simply looks like it's meant to be somewhere in the ballpark of a real-world battleship or aircraft carrier, which would make it some 300 meters or so. I bumped the length up to 620 meters, as 300 was just really minuscule next to a proper Imperial Star Destroyer. Also, 620 meters allowed me to include a much more robust hangar bay, one that could actually hold a full squadron of TIE Fighters, a Lambda shuttle, and a handful of other small craft. But there you have it, the original Colin Cantwell Star Destroyer brought fully to life. Of course, if I was to really come up with an in-universe history for this ship, I wouldn't exactly call it a Star Destroyer with a length of only 620 meters. So let's call it an Incursor class cruiser. With a robust communication and sensor array and relatively heavy armament for a ship of its size, the Incursor class was ideal for controlling fringe border worlds where the continued presence of of a proper Star Destroyer would be deemed unnecessary or otherwise costly. Carrying a full squadron of TIE Fighters and several landing craft, the Incursor class was fully capable of single-handedly sustaining the occupation of a small system. But what other capabilities and specifications does the Incursor class have? If you guys have more ideas for this ship, I would love to hear them. And if you want additional details clarified, I'll try my best to come up with something. This model was a big project and required input and help from more than one artist. It uses components from Howard Day and Angelos Carterinus, 
And it was Angelos Carterinus who also supplied the positively beautiful Devastator model that you've seen in a few shots. So a big thank you to them, as well as all of my amazing patrons over at Patreon, who support me and give me the freedom to work on projects like this. You guys are the backbone of the channel. To the rest of you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.